Hello and welcome to this Crazy Talk Animator 2 video tutorial on the introduction to the stage and special effects. So here I have this lovely project which I wish to play and you can see how exquisite it, it looks with the flowers, the camera movement, the windmill and a slight movement in the clouds in the background. Now a project like this might seem complicated but it's actually very simple. If I go up to the 3D viewer and I click on that now you can see what's happening behind the scenes. We basically have several props. We have a background and several props and they're all layered, okay? And they have their distances. And this gives you that special effect. And I can play this back because now in Crazy Talk Animator, you can be in the 3D viewer and you can play back your motions. Okay? So that's a beautiful little prop, uh, a scene, I'm sorry, that consists mainly of different props layered with distances. Now, besides having a scene like this, let me control N to have something new. We also have additional scenes like classrooms, okay? We have also coffee shops. We have conference rooms. And if you download the, the previous, um, the, the bonus pack for uh, le previous legacy Crazy Talk 1 um, projects and props, you will find these in here too, okay? So let me go back up. And there's one more thing I'd like to show you. You see that now some of these scenes have an RS inside. This means render style. So in Crazy Talk Animator, Animator 2, we now have a render style that allows you to control the color theme of your stage and your scene. So you simply select it and you go to the left side toolbar here where it says render style. So if your project has an RS, that means it's compatible with the render style option. And what does the render style do? It basically allows you to instantly change the color theme of that project. Okay? You can choose if you want to change the entire project or if you only wish to change a specific item. So for example, if we're right there and I want to bring attention to this desk, then I just select the desk and I choose neon. Okay? And let's say the other table here. I can choose neon for that too. And the rest of the furniture. So this is a very neat function inside. So let me control N and let's learn what, how we can create our own scene. Now in Crazy Talk Animator 2, you can work with three types, well, various types of files. You can work with image files. These can be BMP, JPEG, uh, PNGs, Targa, and I'll show you. I have a folder inside where I have some of these images, and I'll bring this in right now. I'm going to go to my folder, and where are my backdrops? Right there. So here, for example, I have a JPEG, but I can bring in PNGs, BMPs, GIF files, I can bring in SWF flash files, I can bring in video files, and I can either use them as a background or I can create a prop. So for example, let's try to do this right now. I'm going to bring in, let's say, this JPEG image, and I'm going to bring this as a background. Okay? So we see what's happening there. So if I go into the 3D viewer, we see that we have the same 3D space, and that background, uh, that, 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 that image background is covering um, the, the, the rear part of the scene. Now, if I would like to adjust this, I can do that. So let me control N just to show you another thing. You see that we have a rectangular, a blue rectangle here? This is what we call the safe area. And if we go into the project settings down here, you'll see the safe area, and I can increase this minimize it or increase it okay so the safe area is basically what you're gonna see in your final video in your final image so if I bring a, a JPEG image like this and I drop it as a background by default or depending on your project settings it will stretch and fill that background now I can adjust it I can go to project settings and then I can choose if I wish to tile it and I can give it a 2 by 2 tile just like I'm uh, using a, a Windows background and I can tile it or if I want the original image, I can just say fit, and that's the original resolution that we have. But you see that we have those margins here, uh, and it doesn't fit the entire project. So then you might want to choose stretch. And once I do this, I can start bringing in props. I can go inside, and let's say outdoor, outdoor scene. And I can bring in a prop of a house. Okay, let me minimize this, and I can bring this inside just like that and if I would like to duplicate this house 
I simply hold the control button while it's selected, move it to the side, and I just duplicated that. If I hold control, I can select the second one, hold control again, hold it, and then drag outside, and I can duplicate that again. So it's very simple. Now, if I go into a 3D viewer, you'll see what's happening. Okay, I basically have my houses, uh, and they're all on the same line. Okay, all on the same layer. But I can change that. I can grab this house in the middle, and you see that little icon at the bottom. I can drag, uh, select that, and drag downwards and bring that house forward. I can select this other one and push it back round to the back. And I could bring this one forward to or to the back and bring this forward also. So what is happening here? If I go to the 3D viewer, we can see what just happened. Okay, I basically rearranged these houses in different um, distances. So that's pretty neat. Great. Now, what if I want to create my own scene? How do I do that? Well, we already, we already started. Um, I can do this simply by starting to drop in different props. Okay, we have inside the content manager, we have different props, which you can use straight off, um, you know, just drag and drop them inside. And if you have your own images, you can bring these two, just like I did there. So let's start to create something. I would like to use a skyline want to make my city I zoom out and it looks about right maybe if I zoom in a little a little there you go okay and then I can bring in um, my second prop and you see it's behind that first one so we can drag this in enlarge it and I can bring this forward okay not bad let me go to the 3d viewer here and zoom out and you can see that I have them organized in different layers. Okay, And if I click on one, you see that the gizmo opens up. So I can move it either on the green y-axis, on the red x-axis, or on the blue z-axis. Okay, And I can drag those if I'd like, just like that. Back and forth, or up and down. Okay. So let's continue with that city. Um, now I want to drop in a road, and I can do this. So let me just bring this in and rearrange it, just like that. Okay, and I can start building in with my elements like that. Now these props were created in Flash. Okay, a lot of these props that we have inside were created in Flash and by therefore they're vector files and I can stretch them as much as I like without distorting the quality of these props. Now you could create your own props if you like. It's fairly simple. You can use either Adobe Flash to create them. You can use Illustrator. You can use Serif's Draw Plus. And if you would like to create your own JPEG images or whatnot, you can use any other tool if you'd like. So let me duplicate this here just like we did before. And you can see that I'm starting to build my own city. Okay, bring this back here and control and I duplicate it and maybe rescale this one, select the next one and I can work both of them at the same time. Maybe a traffic light. Let me scale this one up a bit and bring it closer. Scale it down. And if you would like to check the distances, you simply have to go to the 3D viewer and zoom out. And you can already start correcting those distances um, inside your for your props. Okay, So uh, that distance is what's going to give that 3D effect to your scene. And we're almost done. Just going to do this, bring this forward, and right about there, and maybe another crosswalk. Okay, just like that, and bring this forward. And I think that'll do nicely. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, uh, because what I want to show you is how to use special effects in here. So I'm going to go to Projects, and I have this one already created. I'm going to go to Street. And I'm just going to bring this project, which I previously created. Okay. And what I did also is that I have a character that's already walking inside. And he, he looks scared. So this is what I want to do. 
At that moment, when the character looks scared, I want to drop in a special effect. So let me zoom in on him, and we can see this better. I'm going to drop a special effects on him. So I can go to SFX, and I can choose anything from the uh, library. Or I can go to Scene, and I can choose Props, Animated Props. And I have an exclamation mark here, which I wish to use. And notice that this exclamation mark has an ANI uh, icon on the upper left. This means it's animated. So this prop, this particular prop, has its own animation. So I'll drop this in. Let me scale it, rotate it, and I'm going to place it on top of this character's head. Okay. Now, because I have the time scrub moved forward, then I'm already creating a keyframe. But that's okay. We're going to get rid of it in a while. I just want to make sure that it's right on top of the character's head and it's the, the appropriate uh, size. And then I'm going to go up here and choose link and link it to the character's head. So every time the character moves, we'll have that prop follow him. And I also want to remove the animations for that prop. So that way I don't have a keyframe. Okay. Let me do this again. Let me attach it to him just like that. So every time he moves, that question mark, that exclamation mark will move. Now at this point here, I want this to be, um, I want this to have an opacity of zero. I want it to be invisible, but I want to drop in uh, a keyframe of one, and I want to move the, t the uh, frame to the side, and then I'm going to bring this back to 100%. So why am I doing this? Basically because I want that uh, exclamation mark to be invisible at the beginning. So I'm going to move him to the beginning again and I'm going to make his opaci the opacity zero and then play and then right about here it's going to appear and I want it to be animated too. Okay. So since I told you that this exclamation mark has an animation I can activate that. So how do I activate it? I can basically right click action menu and I can choose this loop function and now it's going to be animated just like that okay let me go out so we built our scene we have our character and there's one more thing that I would like to do I would like to bring in my own prop I would like to create my own prop not just a background but a prop so I'll go into my folder and I have some images here and I have this police car which is a PNG and I will drag and drop this inside. And instead of choosing a background, I'm going to choose a prop. And Crazy Talk will automatically convert this into a usable prop for me. So we're going to leave it like that. And I'm going to bring this out. Let me zoom in a little. I'm going to have the car outside. And then um, I'm going to play this a bit. And I'm going to move to set a keyframe, just a little keyframe. And then I am going to play back this project. I'm going to play the project and right about there I want that car to appear. Okay? Just like that. And then I want it to leave the scene at the end. Okay? So what happens? I just set in a keyframe with that prop. Car's coming and when he sees it he gets scared and then the car leaves. Notice also that uh, the character is stepping on the car, on the police car. This is because I don't have the distance properly set inside the, the, the I don't have the Z depth set in properly. You see that there? So I can correct it. I need to bring the car out. So if I go to my original frame, I just push pull this car out to make sure that it's out here. And let me do this again. I'm going to remove all animation. I'm going to play this back a bit. I'm going to play, play, play. And then right about there, or maybe till the end of the project, I want my car to zoom by. Just like that. So let's see what happens. Car is coming. He sees it. He starts panicking, and the car zooms by. And of course, we don't have that issue where the, the character is trampling the car. Now, just like we added an animation to that part there, um, you know, with the exclamation, I can do the same with the car. I can bring in another animated prop. I can place this over the car, 
and I can link it with that car. So every time it moves, it'll follow the car. Okay, maybe just like that. And then I can give this a loop. I want that sort of siren to be playing. And there you go. Um, the last special effect I want to show you is how to use an, an image layer. Now if I go up here to image layer, you'll see that we have several of them. I have one that looks like a, like a shadow, like a spotlight shadow. If you, let's say, I had a, a character right in the middle of the scene, um, I could use, uh, let's say, this one, Spotlight 02. Okay. Or I could use this vignette from the very beginning. Okay, just like that. But I want this vignette to have an opacity of zero. Okay, just like we do with the exclamation. So we're at the beginning, and I want the opacity to be zero. And then right about there, I want the opacity to turn up. Okay. But what happens is that it slowly starts fading in. I don't want that. So I need to set in a keyframe right before. So how do I do that? I go to opacity, and let's say right before I bring the opacity up to 100%, then I might want to drop in an opacity of zero. And I simply drop this down. So then the final project will look something like this. Car's coming in, he sees the car, he starts panicking, and you see that image layer. And of course, I can drop in uh, special effects to my project if I wish, and it would look something like this. If I would like to drop in a special uh, sound effect, I can simply drag in a sound. For example, I have a sound file here. This is an MP3 file of an ambulance. I can drop this inside and bring this a special a sound effects one. Okay. And there you go. And that's how easy it is to bring in your own um, vector, your own uh, props, your JPEG files, your BMP files, your um, your, um, you know, vector, your, your vector files, like I mentioned. Uh, if you have SWF files, you can also bring these in. So if you have an animated SWF files, you can drop them in and that'll work. Now, besides this, we can also work with video files. So I'm going to go to scene here and I have a scene of a dashboard of a car. And the same way that we fitted this onto that rectangle, we fitted our background onto the rectangle, that blue rectangle, which is a safe area, I'll do this again. And this is what I want to show you. So besides bringing in image files, and besides bringing in SWF vector files, I can also bring uh, video files. And I simply have to drag and drop. Now these video files can be MP4, they can be AVI. I believe they also work with Windows Media Files, NWV. So you drag and drop, bring this as a background. And now I have a background filling that project. And if I go out, you can see the layers of my props. Okay, And you see an opacity in this prop here. So these are vector files, okay? These were created outside, and obviously you can scale them and you will have no distortion. And this particular prop here has an opacity in the windshield. That way you can see through it. You can do the same with PNG. So, for example, the police car that I had in, in the previous project, that was a PNG file. The police car, remember? That way I can have an opacity and I can have that cutout effect. So with this video here, if I play this back, see the video playing. Okay. And then if I would like, I could actually rotate this the steering wheel a bit to give it the effect that someone is steering that car. And I can set keyframes inside, just a little jerky motion back and forth. And I'm setting keyframes for that steering wheel. So it gives the illusion that somebody is driving that car. Okay. So now, if I press F11 and I go into full screen, give me a second. Okay, I'm in full screen here, and I press spacebar. I can see my project in full screen. That looks very, very cool. 
So you start seeing all the all these new all these cool features and crazy talk, and you can start getting ideas on what you can do. Okay? So that's it for this tutorial. We hope you can use some of these tips and tricks, and we hope to see them in your future projects. Thank you.